love the Pistons, but I love you, and you love the Pistons. And now there are reports that teams, specifically the Rockets, are aggressively trying to trade for the number one pick. If the Pistons trade this pick, I will never, ever, 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 ever not think about it. This is a no-brainer Cade Cunningham number one pick. You cannot trade a no-brainer number one pick. Jalen, why would they even be considering this? I already see the big stage. The first draft held on ABC. I'm on the set, suited and booted, next to Jay Will, next to Maria Taylor, next to Woj. The Detroit Pistons have not drafted number one since the early 70s. That was Bob Lanier, the big dauber. They haven't taken a guard number one since 1967, and that was my biological father, Jimmy Walker. You're mm. not going to trade this pick because you don't get this type of player very often, clearly, in particular, since he's the undisputed number one overall player. He is a tailor-made prospect for today's NBA. He is as close to a can't-miss as you get. The Pistons should not even be picking up the phone. They should not even be picking up the phone. Yeah. Look at him. Look at him in that That's Pistons uniform. About. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. And here's the thing. Not only should we not be considering trading the pick, don't even play no games. Don't work out other people. Mm. Don't speculate that you're considering. You, it's th use that time talking to his family. Use that time talking to his high school yep. coach. Use that time ingratiating him in the, to the city. Because you saw Ben Wallace up there. He'll let you know what it's like to be a Detroit Pistons. A, a Detroit Piston player and how we put on for our squad. You know what? I can't wait. I can't wait till Cade Cunningham is at the Jalen Rose leader in the show, but we start the show with tonight's big deciding game four in the NBA finals between the Bucks and the Suns. And the story is Giannis Antetokounmpo, Jalen Rose, 42 in game two, 41 in game three. He's been absolutely Ooh. dominant. What can the Suns Not do to stop or deep. slow down? He was gone Giannis. knee deep. Once he did the freak with me. I don't know <laughs> if they're going to be able to stop Giannis. See, the one thing about being a, a, a primary three-point shooting team, you're going to have your hot and cold days. If he continues to drive the basketball and play with force, I think he's going to get stronger as the series progresses. Here's why. He's actually making his free throws. Yep. That's going to give him more confidence to drive to the basket. And also, they don't have anybody in particular other than Aiton that can oppose the Greek freak if he's being aggressive. I ain't mad at the one leg fall away. I like that he added that. I'm not mad at him attempting one or two heat check three. But when he decides that he's going to continue to drive the basketball and dunk with the left, dunk with the right, dunk with two hands, and then all of a sudden you get cutters. And he was doing back doors to Bobby Portis, getting him a layup, getting other guys involved. And so this is the Giannis I think we're going to see for the rest of the series. But if you're DeAndre Ayton and the Phoenix Suns, you must find a way to keep the young fella on the floor. Your team looks mm. dramatically different with him off the floor. In the previous game, he had like 18 points in like the first 15 or 16 minutes. Once he got in foul trouble, that's when Milwaukee went on their initial run. And at that point, the Suns are playing on their heels. Exactly. They need to keep DeAndre Ayton on the floor, especially without Sarich. Craig isn't 100%, so that means they're going to put in Frank Kaminsky, and no one can stop Giannis, but Frank Kaminsky definitely can't <laughs> stop Giannis. They also need contributions from CP3 and Devin Booker, who were so good in Game 1 and Game 2 at home, but struggled a little bit in Game 3. Do you expect them to bounce back in Game 4? I like what you did there, family, because you're right. They alternated 30-point games in Games 1 and 2. But the problem in game three, neither one of them cracked 20. If they're going to mm. win this series, both of them have to be scoring in particular on the road where you're not going to get Mikael Bridges to also all of a sudden pop up and score 27 points. I appreciate, however, what Cam Johnson was able to do off the bench. That's something positive that they're going to be able to build on on the road. But you're going to need Cameron Payne to push the tempo. You're going to need uh, Jay Crowder to make shots from three. But ultimately, your backcourt is what's going to drive this. And Book can't finish the last five minutes on the sideline unless they're up 25 and he's putting ice on his knees. It can't be because he was already struggling, only had 10 points, and Monty was trying to save him for the next game.
Yeah, see, I was very, very confounded by that decision to keep Book on the bench in the fourth quarter, especially because of the final schedule. There's multiple days off between game three and game four. So the idea that he was resting for fatigue reasons doesn't really work for me. However, one of the reasons that CB3 and Book did struggle in game three was Drew Holiday. You know what Drew Holiday is going to give you on the defensive end, but in game three, he showed up on the offensive end as well. Can they expect that in game four? No hesitation. I think they can. And the threes that he made in particular in the second half, Jacoby, were major. But let me go back to your comment about Booker finishing on the bench. Here's why you do that. You go to your star player and you say, I'm going to go small with CP and Cameron to see if we can force some tempo and get the game back under control. Get us around 10. And then I'll go to you. The problem is they never made a run. If they would have made a run, he would have got back in the game. They just never made a run. Yeah, they didn't make a run. And you talk about them pushing the tempo. The problem is when you push the tempo, the Bucks are great in transition, especially Giannis, and they will feast in transition if the Suns allow them to in Game 4. We have some other NBA news, which is very interesting and has some serious implications. Kawhi Leonard had successful surgery to repair a partial tear of his ACL. Now, Kawhi Leonard has a player option. He could opt in to one year about $36 million. He's also eligible to get about a four-year, $176 million contract from the Clippers. Do you think this injury and his rehabilitation will change or impact his decision that he has to make this offseason? You know how much I am a fan of Kawhi and how I've talked about the level of player he was from San Diego State playing for Steve Fisher and Brian Dutcher, basically playing center in high school, wasn't much of a three-point shooter to being a finals MVP and a multiple champion in the NBA. But this knee injury is clearly a a real issue. It's, Mm. in theory, what got him out of San Antonio, the alleged misdiagnosis of it, is what allowed him to fall out with the team and ultimately led for him to end up in Toronto. So now that he's with the Clippers, you don't want to see your star player go under the knife, in particular when he has an option to be a free agent. But this actually is the best thing long term that could have happened for the Clippers. Why's that? Because you have because you're the team that has to be happy with paying Kawhi a maximum deal, even though that you know that he's injured, even though that you know that you're going to need the low manage. That was a part of the agreement when he got there. And so also as the player, you don't want to be traveling, being recruited while you're injured, while you're Mm. trying to rehab. So therefore, I think because of that, he ultimately ends up signing long term to stay with the Clippers. Yes, I also agree. I think that if he was 100% healthy and he had a great playoff run, then maybe he considers joining the Heat or the Mavericks or leaving L.A. But the idea that he just had surgery and he's going to be rehabbing, and as you mentioned, he's going to load manage. This tells me that he's not going to play a full slate of games next year, and he's comfortable doing that with the Clippers. Jalen. We had the Major League Baseball All-Star Game last night. It started out so exciting. We had Otani with a 1-2-3 first inning. We had Vlad Jr. going deep. But it got kind of boring in the late innings, Jalen Rose. I can't (laughs) lie. What do you think of the All-Star Game? Bam. You know why it got boring? Because they took my... 